Welcome to this video that is going to be a demonstration on how to apply the law of cosines. Okay, the law of cosines is represented by these three equations here. Uh, in any particular form, you could use um, any one of your choosing. Okay, uh, and for law of cosines, what does it do? It solves, it can be used to solve non right triangles. Okay. We're using this specifically where we can no longer use Sokotoa, okay? Now, I derived these three formulas in class. It seems like they just kind of magically appeared and like, here's the law of cosines. But now I'm gonna continue and uh, show how they're applied, okay? You are not responsible most likely for the derivation of the formulas, but how to use the formulas. Okay, which really brings us to a very big question here of when do we use them? Okay, there's two cases that the law of cosines becomes useful. Case one is if you have three sides, all sides are known. Okay, when all sides are known, you can pick whatever angle you want to find. Okay, if I know A, B, and C, okay, I can sit there and say, well, I want to find angle A, or I want to find angle B, or I want to find angle C. Any one of those decisions you make will uh, allow you to say, use the first equation if you want to find A, second equation if you want to find B, third equation if you want to find B. Okay? These equations, if you notice, they're all very similar to each other, and you can generalize them almost into one type of equation uh, if you are trying to commit it to memory, which is not a bad idea. Okay. Case two, you're going to get two sides. Excuse me, let me stay with red here, okay? You're going to get two sides and the included angle, okay? And two sides and the included angle would be something like you're going to get A and C, and the included angle is B. Do you see how A and C both form angle B? Or you could say I'm going to get B and C, and that would be able to give me uh, and also be given angle A. Okay, or uh, I'm given sides A and B and angle C. Now, when you are given that scenario, very specifically, what you're finding is the side across from the angle. So in that scenario in green, you'd be finding C. In this purple scenario, you would be finding side A. And in the red scenario, you would be finding side B. Okay, so... Let's move forward and I'll do a problem, two problems, one for each scenario. Uh, I'll solve the whole triangle, okay? And we'll take a look. The first case here is where all sides are known, so it's kind of from geometry for it. It's a side, side, side scenario, okay? And I'm giving you in a table here, you notice everything on the right side of the table is known. That's kind of a visual hint if you're using graphic organizers. And I have a nine here, an eight here, and a five here. Okay, now at this point I need to make a decision on what angle I'll find. I'm going to find angle C right here. Okay, so I'm just going to set up a formula and I'm going to use the bottom one because that's the one that has the angle C in it. So you have to start in the formula, if you notice all three formulas, whatever angle you're using, you start on the opposite side. So opposite side of angle C is 5 squared equals 9 squared plus 8 squared. Now, if you notice, that order doesn't really matter because it's addition, okay? Minus 2 times 9 times 8 cosine C, okay? Now, we want to be able to solve this equation, and most of you will probably sit there and say, okay, to solve this equation, I'll start squaring this and get 25, 81, 64. But there's so much typing involved in this, you're better off just leaving these squares there for now especially if they become ugly decimals, they become even uglier when you square them. So let's just take a look at how we move forward here. The first thing I want to be able to do is get cosine C by itself and then use the inverse function on my calculator to find the angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, cancel off the 9 squared and 8 squared from the right side of the equation using subtraction, doing it on both sides, Gives me 5 squared minus 9 squared equals 8 squared. Minus 8 squared is equal to negative 2 times 9 
times eight. If you notice, I left it as three factors instead of multiplying it out. And then those three factors are really one coefficient. So I'm going to divide by that coefficient. Okay, that's going to give me the cosine of C is equal to 5 squared minus 9 squared minus 8 squared, all divided by negative 2 times 9 times 8. Okay? Okay. Now, at this point, this is a major concept in trigonometry. This is a ratio of sides, and I want the angle. So that means it's going to be the inverse button on my calculator. So C equals cosine inverse. And I let kids in my class just draw an arrow there for that number instead of rewriting it. Okay? So at this point, I'm going to go to my calculator. Okay? And you must make sure that your calculator is in degrees. Okay? And I'm going to do this in two steps here. First, I'm going to compute this number, okay, uh, here that's getting inverse cosine, and then I'm going to use the copy-paste feature just to stay organized. So I'm going to start with left parenthesis and do 5 squared minus 9 squared minus 8 squared. Close that parenthesis off. Hit divide. New parenthesis for the denominator. And then I'm not going to use parentheses when I do the multiplication down there. I'm actually going to use the multiply symbol because it's a little easier to read. Okay? So that's that rational expression, just an ugly fraction. It's a decimal, right? And then, like I said, I'm going to hit second cosine and then go up arrow and hit enter, which is a copy paste feature in the calculator, and then hit enter. And that it's going to give me 33.56 degrees when I round it to the hundredth place. So I'm going to get 33.56 degrees. And I'm going to put that in my table. Okay? Now, I could do the law of cosines again. But most likely, even uh, if you haven't had my course, uh, the teacher that you have is teaching you the law of signs first. So if you notice here, I'm going to make a split screen, okay, and show you here that what I did was continue the problem, okay, and use the law of signs in these two rows set up right here, okay? And then for cross multiplication and using the inverse button, I found that angle B was 62.19 degrees, and then I just used the 180 rule. You can pause the video and take a look at it all you want, okay? But it's right there. I'm just trying to save a little time, and the focus of this video is on the law of cosines, which is done over on this side over here, okay? Okay, so that's the law of cosines in a nutshell. Good to notice that you see that the 180 rule and law of signs get integrated after it in this scenario of side, side, side to solve the entire triangle. Now, let's move over to scenario two, which is side angle side where two sides in the included angle are known. Okay, so again, I gave you the information in table form. Okay, so we've got A is 12. B is 14, and 12 and 14, the sides of A and B, form this angle, which is 32 degrees. Okay? So, again, I just happen to be using this final rule here because it says cosine C, and I have angle C, but the pattern is really the same in all three of these. Okay? And, like I said when I was drawing the arrows in the triangle earlier, I have to be finding side C in this case. So, I'm going to say C squared is equal to 12 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 12 times 14 cosine of 32. Now, this might be intimidating for a moment, but really, if you just look at the left side of this equation and say, 
I'm trying to get C by itself and ignoring all this. You should sit there and say, oh, I know how to do that. You just square root to undo the square. And that is in fact the case. You are in fact going to just square root both sides. Respect the fact that it's plus minus when you solve a quadratic equation like that. But then don't forget because it's the side of a triangle, you won't in fact need the negative. So what am I going to do here? I'm just going to go over to my calculator and use the square root feature to solve this equation. Second square root, and then I've got 12, excuse me, just a little typo there, 12 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 12 times 14 cosine of, I believe it was 32. I just want to check that real quickly and make sure it was wonderful. And that is going to give me 7.42. So 7.42 is my side C. Okay, 7.42. Always respect the unit here. There's not a unit here. If it says inches, right inches, feet, right feet, miles, right mile. Okay, so where does that leave us if we're solving the rest of the triangle? Well, similarly here, I can, although this was a different scenario uh, where I knew two sides in an included angle, I can, again, believe it or not, move right to doing the law of sines. Because if you notice, we said in our organizer, anytime that you have two rows with one thing missing, it's a good idea to use the law of sines. So I use the law of sines and wind up ascertaining that angle B is 89 degrees. And then from there, in green here, I just do the 180 rule, which is available for every triangle when you know two of the angles and get 59 degrees. Okay? And that is the law of cosines in a nutshell. Two cases. If you know all three sides, you can find any angle. And that process, you notice, is one where you actually have to solve an equation and get a letter by itself, excuse me, get a, very, uh, a value by itself in the form of cosine C, and then use the inverse cosine button. And then the other scenario where you have two sides in an included angle is a little bit different because to set once you set that up you just square root both sides and realize it's just the positive value both scenarios lend themselves to using the law of signs and the 180 rule to finish the triangle so i hope this is helpful i know a few of you missed class today so i want to take some time on a friday after school and make this and try and support you in the best way i could okay enjoy <laughs>